Alright, welcome back to a software engineer place. Uh, we're back in Human Resource Machine today. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, select our little guy here and jump right in. So last time we finished all of these yellow levels, so this time we're going to start looking at some of these blue levels. Uh, starting off with the Zero Exterminator. I don't know what this has in store for us, so let's see. Where do you see yourself in five years or ten years? I have enough here from another boss that says from this point on your performance will be evaluated with extra scrutiny. What a treat! <laughs> okay, so we have to send everything that isn't zero to the outbox. So six goes out, zero stays behind. So Looks like we got a new block here called the Jump If Zero, so we're going to have to use that. So first of all, okay, we're going to get something from the inbox, and then we want to check to see if it's zero, right? So this is kind of like using an if statement in programming, which basically tells the computer to evaluate a condition. So in this case, the condition that we're evaluating is, is what's in my hand zero? So, if we are holding a zero, we'll want to jump to a later point in the program. Otherwise, we just want to go to the outbox. So, we'll pick up something. If we are zero, we'll move down here. If it's not zero, we'll skip over this step and move straight to the outbox. But here, I think we just want to pick up another item from the inbox. So then we should be able to start the loop. Okay, so let's think about this. We're going to pick up the six. We're going to move... And we're going to check if it's zero. If it is zero, we're going to move down here. But since it's not zero, we're going to move to the outbox. Okay. The next one is a zero. So we're going to pick it up. Since it is zero, we're going to skip over the outbox step and just go straight back to the inbox. So I think this should work. Let's try it out and find out. We're going to pick up the 6, and move it to the outbox. Over here, pick up the 0. Alright, that looks like it's working. Uh-oh. Okay, what happened there? Okay. Went to the outbox. Now we go back to the in. Oh. Okay, so this extra inbox step is unnecessary because we're, we're picking up extra numbers now, and that's not what we want to do. So what was happening is we were picking up inbox, and then if it wasn't zero, we're going to the outbox, and then we were still going back to the inbox and picking up another, so that when we went back here, we hit the inbox again. So we were throwing away a number. So we'll see that happen here. Okay. We're gonna pick up the zero. And now, oh, wrong button. Okay. Okay. So, we're gonna pick up the zero. And now we go back to the inbox step. And that means we're just gonna throw away the zero before we even check to see if it's zero. So. We do not want uh, this inbox step to be here. We only ever want to pick up one number at a time. So let's try this now. We're going to get the six, go to the outbox, now we get a zero, and now we should skip over the outbox step and just go straight back to the inbox. Yeah, okay, now we're, now we're cooking with gas. Now we're working. So we'll go ahead and step through here. One question to have, you see this is a B. Now, Sometimes when you're writing actual code, you have to worry about whether or not a variable is a number, like 8 here, or a character, or a string of characters, like B here. In this case, it didn't matter, but sometimes if you try to use a, uh, if you try to compare a letter to a number, um, the programming language would might complain about that, so just something to be aware of. So this is zero, so we should just throw it away. Same with that one, and move that over. We'll pick up the zero, and we should just carry on. Let's see how we did. Four commands are fewer. We did it in four. 
And we did it in 27 steps. Okay. So, let's see if we can do it in fewer steps now. I wonder if that's just going to be a matter of... Um, doing something similar where we... Uh, How we did before, we had multiple iterations in the. Let's see how many how many steps does this take? Or was it fewer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we did it in 23 that time around. So, just goes to show there's a trade-off between the number of blocks you use and how quickly the the program executes. So let's move on up now to the Zero Preservation Initiative. So from the sound of this, I think we're going to be keeping everything that is a zero. So the zero, <laughs> the previous assignment wasn't inclusive. Okay, so we gotta we gotta send only zeros. So basically, it's going to be very similar to the last program. We're going to pick up a number and then. We want to, if it's zero, we want to jump to a the, um, the outbox. But if it isn't zero, we want to jump back to the um, start there. And then after we go to the outbox, we want to jump back to the start again. So let's step through this. So the first number is five. We're going to get the five. And it's not zero, so we're going to move to this jump statement, come back to the start, and get another number, which is zero. So since we have zero, we're going to then jump down here to the outbox and then go all the way back to the start. So let's see how that happens in practice. So throw away the five, move the zero to the outbox. We should throw away the eight, throw away that, move the zero to the outbox. We should throw that away and move that last zero to the outbox there. Perfect. Let's see how we did performance-wise. Okay, we're good on size. We're over on um, speed, so let's see if we can speed this up at all. I think... see what that does. So now we're going to pick up another number and then jump right back into the into the fray here. Okay, slowly but surely getting somewhere. Just gonna go crazy and basically duplicate it a bunch of times here. I, I don't know that this is really speeding anything up because we basically just now get stuck in the bottom half of the program. But it looks cool. Yeah, now we're even slower. <laughs> All right, let's um, let's pair it back to how it was before, and just duplicate what we had previously. Get rid of this. Okay, so now we want to go to the inbox. And basically, we want to just do the same thing. Okay, so now we're basically just doing it twice, um, 
except here we're jumping all the way back to the top of the program so that we get uh, two loops. Let's see how we do it. I, I'm just making a bunch of extra blocks, seeing what happens. So that's 27 again. What do you think? How are we gonna speed this up? Let's think. So currently it's doing this in 27 um, steps. So inbox jump. going to be a bunch of trial and error um, for me, because I can't think of any way immediately to speed this up in such a way that we will uh, get it done in 25. I don't think, oh, well, hey, there you go, you see? Trial and error wins the day. Uh, we actually did it in less than... 25 steps, we did it in 24, so not bad. <laughs> um, basically just adding that extra inbox step in there kind of sped things along um, a little bit. So I think we'll do one more level, we'll do the sub hallway, and then we'll call it a day for this video. So let's jump into the sub hallway. So the problems are getting a little bit more in depth, but we have to deal with subtraction now. So I'm guessing this is going to be similar to the ad box. Okay. So we want to subtract the first number from the second and put that in the out box, and then subtract the second from the first. So getting a little bit tricky on us here. We want to take the first number and let's see, subtract the first from the second. So we need to store the first number so that we can pick up the second number and then subtract it from what's in zero. And then we want to send that to the out box. Then we want to, we need to pick up the first number in zero again, but then what we want to do is we want to pick up the second number, and we want to store it in a different bank. Then we want to pick up what we left in zero, subtract it from what we stored in one, and then move to the out box. So here we have to do that swap that we talked about in the last episode, which is why we have to use um, register number one here, um, because we have to get the second number and subtract the first from it. So let's just run through this once, restore the two, pick up the six, do the subtraction, move it out. Now we pick up the five, restore it, but we want to then pick up the five, subtract the four, and move that out. He's gonna get mad at us. Management expected negative four, but you outboxed one. Okay. Am I doing this in the wrong order? Subtract the first from the second. I might be doing this in the wrong order. So... Um, Let's just double check that. Let's move all of these down. Let's see if he gets angry about wrong input this time. OK, 
Okay. So we did not have that in the wrong order. Good to know. Inbox copy to... Inbox outbox. So there's something wrong in the second portion of the code here. Let's step through it. Um, and try and figure out where we're going wrong. And... Um, Subtract the second from the first. I wonder if we're supposed to use the same two numbers. So in that case, we should get, um, we should have five and negative five here. If he gets mad at us for, uh, not outputting negative five for the second time around, then we'll know for sure. Let's see, does he expect negative five? Yeah, okay. So, we... I kind of misread the problem there, and that's my bad. So, let's go ahead and get rid of all of this extra stuff. And start again. So, we need to... We need to keep both numbers in memory uh, for now. So, let's go ahead and copy him to one. But we are going to, we're still holding on to number one, and then we're going to move to the outbox. So let's just run through this here. We store two, we store eight. We're still holding on to eight, we pick it up, and then we throw him away. And now we have to go and get the opposite number, which means we need to have, we're going to have to copy from zero, subtract what's in one, and then move to the outbox. Okay, so we're going to store both numbers here. We're still holding on to the 8, so we subtract the 1 and move the 7 over. And we pick up the 1, and we subtract the 8, get negative 7, and move the so Now he's saying not enough. Okay. So now we can loop with a jump statement here, and that should do the bulk of the program. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to speed him up. Okay, looks good. How do we do performance-wise? Ten or fewer commands. All right, we did it in ten. And how about the speed? Nailed it. All right. Well, right on, right on. So it just goes to show that it's important that you thoroughly understand your problem before you jump straight into uh, trying to come up with a solution. Um, I misread it. I thought we were going to be taking the first two numbers and subtracting them in one direction and then taking the next two and subtracting them in the other direction, but I was wrong. Um, so, you know, you got to make sure that your problem is well defined and uh, that you fully understand your solution before you jump in um, and start implementing it. Anyway, that's um, that's all I'm going to gonna try and take on this uh, this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy um, if you did enjoy this episode, please feel free to drop a like and uh, consider subscribing. Um, super appreciate it. This has been a software engineer plays. Uh, thank you very much for your watching.